We are here with a game. Uh, this is a game for Pro Dota 2, non-pro version, so the non-pro league. Uh, it's a game between NextKZ and Z Nation. We're going to see uh, one game between these two teams, and after that we'll continue to go to the league where we'll see NextKZ versus MTW, so you can stick around for that one later as well. Uh, it's going to be NextKZ on the Radiant for this side and Z Nation on the Dire side. And as you can see, NextKZ are playing with a stand-in for this game. Uh, the stand-in of which is Ars Art, or otherwise known as Smile from Navi. Because the person missing for NextKZ is Mantis. So we're not going to see a Mantis, um, Mantis morphing today. Z Nation is also using uh, a stand-in, using a light. And uh, we will have the first pick going towards the Radiant team. As going... Uh, for next KZ, as I just noticed, I still have to put this one as offline, which I will do right now. Fixed. So uh, yeah, that's uh, that's what it is. It's a uh, it's a pro Dota 2 non pro non pro game. Wow, I know it's a very confusing name. Like pro Dota 2, non pro. Like a double positive, so that it's a negative. Well, never mind. It's just Dota 2. Let's keep it at that. We have a Broodmother ban out as the first ban for next KZ. Z Nation is going to go for a Nature's Prophet. Not really uh, any exciting stuff. I am kind of hoping to see a Templar Assassin because I like seeing her. I haven't seen her enough to judge if she is really going to be impacting a lot of the metagame or if she's just being picked up now because she's fairly new. Uh, but she is fairly even to counter, I've noticed. At least the refraction is. So you can stop her from uh, from farming with uh, with the Venomancer or the Shrek. Whichever is, uh, well, and of course more. There's a lot more heroes that can do the same thing as well. But uh, yeah, I would be quite uh, inter interested to, to seeing her again. But uh, but we'll see. And uh, next KZ have actually, since the uh, international qualifiers, they have been uh, not performing as well as in the qualifiers, so I'm hoping to see that uh, they have picked up again and uh, are going to go at this at full strength. As uh, we're going to see uh, how the nation is doing, and I have to admit, I have not seen them in a while, so I am quite curious to see uh, how these two teams are going to do. We have a, a CK ban out from next KZ, so uh, no carry for that one. As uh, well, yeah, like and ban out for Z Nation. I mean. Really, what were we expecting? It's th it does mean that we still have the Dark Syrian as well as the Chen, as well as the Invoker. Three heroes that are reasonably picked up. Well, never mind, Invoker banned. But still, a Dark Syrian Chen going through to the pool, and I'm expecting it to be either both, so that maybe Z Nation bans out of the Shrek or something, because that's a good hero to ban out or pick up first as well. Uh, but just for that chance that Z Nation can pick up two or one of those two heroes, that would be a very good thing for them to do. Though if next KZ would pick up a Darkseer, they would probably end up uh, for be forced to pick up a Enigma, just uh, to deny that combination with the Enigma and Darkseer. It's just uh, you don't you don't want to deal with that. Regardless if it might, even if it's only gonna happen like twice or once in a in an entire game, that moment, that team fight, that could turn everything around, and you don't want to deal with that. We have a Chen ban out first from Z Nation, so. Um, that hero is not going to be in the pool. Let's see if Dark Sphere is actually going to get picked up here as a first pick. Or if they're going to leave it into the pool and rather pick up a Lushrek for themselves or something like that. I mean, Lushrek is a hero that can work in a lot of combinations as well. Like Sand King. Shadow Demon. He can play support. He can play aggressive. He can play solo lane. Solo mid. But it looks like next because he is uh, taking their time. And there we go. Darkseer is still being picked up. So it kind of forces the nation to maybe pick up an Enigma unless uh, they want to risk an uh, XKZ lot and pick up. But Le Shrek and an Enigma would definitely not be bad picks here. I uh, I would sign for that if I was the nation. I mean, Enchantress is still in the pool as a jungle hero. I'm I'm purely no, mentioning her for mentioning her for the jungle hero. Wow, we have a Lone Druid and a Venom as picked up instead here for the nation. I mean. Quite unusual pickups. Picking up a Venomancer first is not very usual. It is, I mean, I have to say, both of these heroes are good counters towards Templar Assassin. Uh, Lone Druid, because he will get his Radiance on his bare Radiance, as well as the Poison Sting from Venomancer gets the Refraction of very, very, very fast. But, well, picking up a solo lane and support, it is, uh, it's not what I was expecting. Let's see if NyxKZ is gonna go for an Enigma. They pick up the Disruptor, so that's already, uh, probably gonna be played as a semi-support, I believe. Eh, doesn't re it's not really necessarily. I mean, I have seen him played before, yesterday, to be exact. And he was played in a tri-lane, where 
Where he went around ganking, uh, ganking first. He is, yeah, he's gonna be the one to farm here with the lane with the crystal main, perhaps. I, uh, yeah, I, I can't really say anything about these picks anymore. I mean, Lishrak's still in. Come on, Enigma's still in. That's, that's heroes. But I normally don't pick. I'm just gonna shut up about predicting picks because this is like unpredictable. Uh, undying. First game I see him in. First game I see him picked up. As uh, we are gonna see if he is indeed as nice mid game as uh, I've been told he is, because apparently he is a uh, he is good mid game. And this is of course a mid game meta game kind of now, since the uh, well, that sometimes you still have the hard carries uh, and stuff no, going through and and making it long games, but uh, most most of it is ending ending mid game. Kinda. Then that's where the peak is at for for a lot of heroes that are recently being picked up in the meta game. We'll see though. I I for one I'm uh, I'm very interested in seeing him. I am not sure how he's going to be played. If he's gonna be a uh, a dual lane, probably with a dual lane with the veterans, it might actually be very good. Yeah. So he can do a lot of harassment also. We'll see though. Tinker banned out as well as a uh, Sand King. And I just still have to mention, I mean, a Nick Malishrak still in two heroes with a lot of pushing power that you normally see banned out or picked up fairly fast. And uh, both still in. And I have to say, both would still fit in as well, as in, in their in their lineups. lineups. I mean, Enigma can basically do everything. He can go into the jungle and then mind Enigma band out. Okay, so that's, you know, that's oh, that one gone. As uh, next KZ is banning out those solo lanes, actually. Tinker as well as Enigma are solo laners, or, you know, potential solo laners. And uh, Z Nation, they are banning out team fight potential in the form of a Tidehunter and a Sand King. And, uh, well, might have something to do with that. They want to have uh, all the team fights so far. Well, I have to say, though, I think Venomancer, Poison Nova is an okay team fight, especially if you have with that undying extra slow and yeah it, it they they do have some teeth actually they have all, all greenish heroes kind of nice and all blue purple heroes on the radiant side sorry noticing that now the bands actually reflect them reflect the same thing interesting but um next kz has team fight they have a dark seer and i mean come on vacuum into kinetic field that's gonna be painful right I mean, he has to do. He has to time it properly, because he has to make sure that the heroes from the vacuum are actually in before uh, before the connect field goes up. Because I don't believe that you can actually uh, that you, that you can vacuum them over the field. But we will see that. I'm not 100% sure actually, because they can also be vacuumed on top of cliffs and stuff. Hmm, interesting. We'll see how that goes. I think you can, if you can vacuum them over cliffs, they should be able to be vacuumed inside the kinetic field as well. Hmm. Anyway, first pick is going to go, uh, in the second pick phase, it's going to go to an XKZ. Uh, what they're still missing is uh, either a jungle hero and a solo lane, or is something to complete their tri lane with and a single solo hero as well. So they need some kind of solo mid hero, maybe another dual lane if they want to go for that. Uh, there is, are still quite some uh, some heroes in. They're going to go for probably a... Uh, well, they pick up a Juggernaut. Either a dual lane with, with Juggernaut and still a support with the Venomant, sorry, the Crystal Maiden and uh, Disruptor on a dual lane. Yeah. Or a tri lane with those three, hero, three heroes. Disruptor solo mid possibility? Could be. He can arrest quite nice with the thunder. Huh. See, Earthshaker picked up for Z Nation, so that is looking towards a tri lane, for sure. So we're just having to see what uh, the last hero for them is going to be. And uh, yeah, I see someone asking Crystal Main in the chat. It's uh, basically because she is very aggressive early game as well. Uh, she, as, and I say as well because uh, that disruptor can be very aggressive with his thunder as well. It's the same as Juggernaut. Reserve time. With his Blade Fury. Three very aggressive heroes. And as in early game, uh, they, 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 their spells just do a lot of damage then. So if they set up a successful gank, a level 2 of level 3, that's going to be almost guaranteed kill. I mean, imagine a hero trying to run away, but he's in a kinetic field, and then there comes the... The Juggernaut, Blade Furying through, and the Nova as well. He's just, he doesn't have any place to go. And we're going to see Shadow Shaman, last pickup for next KZ. And he is going to be solo mid, most likely. As we're going to see a Warlock pickup for Z Nation as the last pickup. And I have to say, I mean, come on. Lushrak not banned nor picked. And I, I think that's one of the first games that I've seen that in, in the last month or so. 
because that is normally not happening at all. This is I, I am really looking forward to seeing how this is going to play out because both teams have lineups that are very, very unique. Let's see. Overlay switched. Yes, thank you. We're just going to wait until uh, people have picked up their hero before we can uh, jump into this game and see who's playing what. Let's see who's playing what. That's it. We already see some people picked up. There we go. There we go. So we have a Z Nation on the dire side. Uh, we have uh, Nexus playing the Warlock. Bullseye is going to be playing that Venomancer. Stand in and Light is going to be playing the Earthshaker. Staliner is going to be on the Undying here. And it's going to be Seedoy on his uh, Lone Druid. I mean, that's basically a signature hero, so that shouldn't come as a surprise for you Z Nation fans. And uh, he will probably go on a solo lane with a mid lane for the Undying. Undying going solo mid here. Let's see who's going to be up against. Well, the Shadow Shaman, we already knew that. It's going to actually be Arsart or Smile being on that Shadow Shaman. He's the stand-in for, uh, for next KZ right now. We have Equal on the bottom lane on the Juggernaut. Uh, what I am expecting to be a tri lane. Crystal Main going to be supporting him being played by Lucky. And uh, indeed, there goes the tri lane Disruptor being played by Stalcat, who was uh, written down here as Cat Cat, just because he can. And uh, last but not least, on the top lane, on the Darkseer, we have Reeves. And uh, he will be uh, fulfilling that solo uh, lane where uh, Warlock with the with the Earthshaker are actually on the top lane right now. Let's see if they're going to be joined. Or is Venomancer going to stick here in his middle to go for dual lane, uh, dual lane mid with an Undying? It's going uh, it's, it's to be very interesting. That is for sure. And, uh, yeah, this is the first game that I'm casting with an Undying in there. Nice. I did see uh, parts of the game yesterday where I think EG picked him up versus Dare. Uh, which game? They, the game actually they, they won. Oh, some mana waste there. Gale not hitting up on Lucky. So no initiation there. Otherwise Earthshaker would have been there with a Fisher as well. And they might have been able to get a first blood. But uh, Clarity Potion already going up for the for the Venomancer. So nice bait out for that for Crystal Maiden. If rather, whether it was intentional or not. And then we see the bear from the Lone Druid. He's actually gonna be uh, trying to pull the lane all the way back Radiance bottom tower is under attack. and uh, pass the tower to the Lone Druid who's just standing here waiting so that he can get some farm guaranteed while uh, the tower tries to take farm from equal. As we can see, I mean hitting with the tower there is, is just not easy. You have to know exactly when to hit. Like now, just having two hits yourself. Uh, and three hits from the tower and then a, a creep dive. So one hit for yourself and then wait until the tower gets it low enough for you to last hit it. That's something that, yeah, the tower there. It's, it's just really annoying. Uh, but he should be getting okay for him. And the bear already getting harassed a lot there. Uh, but yeah, the Cedo is, is, is not a stranger for the Lone Druid, so he should be fine there as well. He will probably won't die for now. As uh, Crystal Main has actually rotated to this middle lane, knowing that Venomancer would be there. It's going to be Shadow Shaman that already took down a gale, took a gale. Uh, aggressive ward up here for the nation up on the high ground, so that they can see uh, they can see next KZ. and they can initiate it on on it and uh, try to get some uh, some first blood because that hasn't gone off yet. And this actually might be the lane where the first blood might be well most likely to happen for uh, at least for uh, for Z Nation side top lane could be potential as well they have got the fisher they have got uh, some uh, fatal bonds as well as i have to just point out i i really like uh, i really like warlock personally purely because of his fatal bonds it's uh yeah it's it's really it's really an enjoyable hero and uh, to watch i am happy that uh, i get to see him played here and uh well, it looks like an almost so lane. If Earthshaker is not going to be, uh, well, if Earthshaker is going to be pulling, he's going to double stack just so they can deny full lanes to the Dark Sea. Dark Sea will be okay-ish with his Iron Shell. He's going to get some farm, but that Iron Shell also makes it possible for, uh, for the Dire to to easier get some denies in uh, on him. Shackle, but is there going to be more though? Nova as well. He actually wants to go for the landing at DK. Gale's going through the Crystal Maiden. Crystal Maiden taking a lot of damage on Dying, getting some right clicks, but on Dying still getting the first blood up on the Crystal Maiden. And Shadow Shaman, Shadow Shaman going down. And there was a soul rip, ripping that last piece of his soul out and getting the, the double kill. Well, actually, it was Venomous that got the first blood for him. But uh, still two kills here in his middle lane. So, indeed, the lane where the first blood was uh, most likely to happen. And it actually did happen. Illusion. And it even, it wasn't, it was a setup from 
from uh, NextKZ. So uh, kind of a overextension there, as you might uh, might call it. There was just not enough damage to go through with that with that shackle. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Unfortunately for uh, for NextKZ. And here goes the bear again. <laughs> He's gonna wait for the creep wave and he's gonna tank it up and he's gonna pull it back again because I mean Lone Druid is otherwise not getting that much done. He knows this is a very dangerous lane. Like I said during the bands and picks, during the drafting phase, you're just gonna have a uh, a phase. Oh yes, that's the way you should do it. At least they uh, got one but not both. But oh well. Well they got two. And then, uh, with both I mean, yeah they got two each, okay. So that's not not a complete uh, complete loss for the diet for the radiant team, uh, but also not for the diet team. But yeah, like I said, kinetic field. Sorry, I was distracted for a second there. Kinetic field with that blade fury is the, is just very very deadly. And they have some great team fight potential for it. Oh, tombstone going up, slowing everybody down. There's the soul rip. Gale going through as well, and that's gonna be the end of it. There was no soul rip yet, but it was DK, but still a lot of damage. It's gonna be Shadow Shaman, it's gonna be on the run. Level 3 still. First level 5 on dying, getting shackled next to the tower. Might be overextension. Venomize is taking over the tower. Here's the Earthshaker. He's not able to land the fissure yet, but that doesn't matter. And dying, taking last hit, taking some last hit from the tower as well, but he's not gonna go down unless this Dark Seer is able to catch up with him, which he is not gonna be able to do, even though he did pop a surge, but he was just not fast enough. That undying with boots is just uh it's just getting him. He doesn't have boots himself yet, so he's not able to do anything there. Four kills so far and all four in this middle lane. And two of those went to the undying, two to the Venomancer and uh, actually Tower got one, I guess. Earthshaker got one with his Fisher Fisher up on uh up on the Crystal Maiden, okay. That's nice for him too getting some extra gold for him but yeah that's a, it is a very dangerous lane here undying really uh, really doing a lot and actually maxing out his tombstone first so going for that uh, high chase uh, ability venomancer actually killing off the juggernaut with his uh, gill helping out there lone druid there for the kill as well as he's gonna chase down the disruptor disruptor who is actually trying to do something but is he gonna be able to do anything gill still hits and that's gonna be a double kill for the venomancer and he uh, gets away from the kinetic field as well, as I believe that should have been put up way earlier. Otherwise, he might not have died, but uh, great play from Bullseye. You're rotating to the bottom lane. He's 3 for 0, and he has been in all 6 kills right now that have been done so far. So really great start for Z, Z Nation here. And, Z and next game, Z not having their captain might uh, might be something that they, that they, are, they are fighting against. Of course, having Arsard as a stand-in is not a bad thing either. Gale does not hit. But uh, it, it's different. Different than playing with your own captain. Playing a different role. I mean, Equal is the one here to uh, to play the carry rather than uh, Mantis is. So that's something that he uh, is not as familiar with as Mantis is. Darks, you're able to run away. I mean, in the meantime, in the meantime, this Warlock has got basically free farm. He is 31 for 9 right now. I mean, Darkseer is not able to do that much, even though he has 26 last hits. That's definitely not bad. Definitely a nice, uh, a nice job by da Solo Darkseer, which actually for the dual lane most of the time. And Venomance is actually rotating to the top lane, wanting to go for something. Uh, wants to land his Gale. Is he going to do that? Yes, he is. I think he is. There's the ultimate as well. Gale going through. Bonds up as well, and he is being chased, and he will go down. Fisher there, and Venomancer to take the job, make the job done. Four for zero right now. He is dominating. He is dominating. Double damage for Lone Druid that we saw him pick up earlier. He is uh, just Radiant's clearing out the jungle with that, clearing out the ancients, getting some extra gold for himself there. As uh, Crystal Maiden has rotated to his bottom lane. I mean, all she did on the top lane was die anyway. She's just gonna leave Shadow Shaman to uh, pick up some experience. Uh, who is gonna be chased by a flash golem here? Tombstone up. Is he gonna be slowed down enough? And actually, I mean, on dying is really tanking right now, so he could just tank up the tower if he wants to, and he wants to. Gale landing, actually not hitting on the Shadow Shaman, but Shadow Shaman one hit away from dying and will well will he he will not he is nice juking he is still alive there we go venomans are getting a double kill and is getting healed by the undying sword healing him up and yeah he took the kill on that uh, disruptor that tp'd in there as well uh sure shadow shaman that uh, tp'd in there as, uh, as we could see, his uh, TP was not uh, very successful on dying, actually taking a lot of damage here from this Darkseer. Iron Shell might actually go down for the first time there, but Darkseer is going to be the one to drop first. And that is 11 for 0 in favor of Z Nation. Z Nation really making this... I mean, I, I was going to say, 
I was gonna say Disruptor, uh, sorry, uh, Undying, but un Undying is doing a good job. I mean, he's been in for 6 out of 11 kills, but this Venomancer has been in 10 out of 11 kills. He is really setting up those ganks uh, with that kill, making sure that just everybody crumbles beneath it. A really good job. And through that distraction kind I mean he may he may he cries havoc he reaps havoc all over the all over the map and that actually uh, forced juggernaut out of his lane to help out the rest of his team and he's actually gonna be in the jungle here as well uh, but he was forced to go to the mid lane to try and, and hope for the night for helping his team and this will give lone druid some time to farm as he uh, he is gonna do just that and may even wait for a, a kill here on this one lane if they're, if they're gonna wait for uh, for someone to come back but yeah Cedar just needs to take that farm so he's gonna be on the lane once again and we have some blinks out from the dark seer who might want to go for that or might just pointing out to his teammates like okay look there's straight farm oh crystal main actually Gale misses frostbite on there as well and here comes the disruptor but here here comes the reinforcement, Crystal Maiden is down, Ven sorry, it's going to be Warlock taking this go, Venom has a pop his ultimate, only hits the Shadow Shaman though, here comes the Juggernaut, <laughs> actually killing off some, uh, on, uh, some zombies if he wants to, getting slowed down a lot, his Venom has ulti also hit on him, Kinetic Field is going to trap in three heroes, but Undying getting a double kill, killing off the Disruptor, killing off the Juggernaut, and Darkseer going down to the Lone Druid, the only one left alive is the Shadow Shaman who had that invisible Druid, and we actually have a GG called. We have a GG called. There is nothing that next KC can hope to be doing for this lineup. It's a nine minute GG. It is a nine minute GG. Uh, yesterday in a podcast I was asked what my fastest GG was ever called. And I I didn't really know. I thought I figured like 19, 19 minutes, 16 minutes maybe. But GG already being called. This is on dying pick. This Venomancer pick is just working out so great. And it's going to be a win for Z Nation. And this pro Dota non pro game non pro dota 2 non pro game there we go and uh, yeah i just i just feel like the game only got started but still so heavily in favor of the nation and next case they just their lineup did not work out the way they wanted it to and uh we yeah, that's, that's basically because the lone druid on first that trial in that that was uh I mean, their try lane got just shut down for kill wise, and they needed that early advantage. But GG called. Uh, my name is Shiver. I am a Ghost of Gamer Scouter. If you uh, stick with me for another 20 minutes, uh, then we will see a game between NextKZ and MTW. So we're going to see if NextKZ can do better versus them uh, in a Ghost League match. And that's uh, two matches. Uh, but yeah, uh, go check out uh, ShiverGamer.com for information about me, my YouTube, my Facebook, and my Twitter. Follow, like, subscribe, and stuff like that. As uh, well, I'm gonna let you look at this for a little while longer. But as you can see, I mean, there was a mechanism up on the warlock. I mean, he had he had pretty decent farmed up there. But the dire, sorry, yeah, the dire is just making sure that it, they, yeah, I don't know. I mean, Disruptor died four times. Uh, so, so, sorry, Disruptor died three times. Everybody died a lot there. There's, there's not one hero that that could have stand against it. Everybody was shut down. Six kills for the Venom Man. So anyway, I'm gonna switch overlay so we don't see the password that was used. Uh, stay, stick around so we can uh, see the next game. And uh, well, that's it. Ten minutes.